Well guys, it's time for another game haul and I don't have a huge amount this time. As usual, we have the issue of there are just not enough uh, PlayStation 2 games left for me to find on a regular basis. But we do have some interesting things nevertheless, so let's get straight into it with the first thing I've found, a PlayStation accessory. It's a third-party multi-tap from Mad Cats, and it's weird. It looks like a kind of three-pin plug, doesn't it? It's an oddity. Wow, it's just weird. So it sticks in the PS2, and you can put your controls all in there, one above the other. I'm not sure how well it's going to work. I'm not even sure it'll be compatible with the Slimline PS2, given the way it looks compared to the size of the PS2 itself. That would just be weird. I'll try and plug it in. It kind of works. I mean, it's not brilliant, but it kind of works. Yeah, I can. But can you actually stack these one on top of the other effectively? You know what? It's fine. It works perfectly fine. I don't think you can get a, a second one in there without a bit of a struggle, but you can have uh, definitely have a full player multi tap plugged in. Only one memory card slot though, so that would be an issue if you were trying to transfer a load of files between memory cards, for example. But as a multi-tap, yeah, that works all right. So let's move on. What else we got? Well, the Super Nintendo collection continues apace. And we have WCW versus NWO Revenge wrestling game. Not really sure about it. I, I was a bit concerned when I turned it over because there's this massive, uh, what looks like a gouge or taken off the... Uh, stuff the, on the back but it's actually a sticker that hasn't come off properly so yeah for a couple of quid I'm going to add that to the N64 collection. It's building a pace it's not huge but I'm enjoying collecting for that system. I know a lot of people say the N64 is overrated but you know what from the moment I started collecting and actually got into the games rather than just playing Goldeneye which is decent enough but has dated a bit I've actually found the N64 has a lot of charm to it. It might look a bit odd with this controller, but it's a lot of charm and I'm enjoying collecting for it. And that's what counts with collecting. Speaking of enjoying collecting, let's have a look at the some uh, other stuff we've got. This is all Wii stuff, so some of you are now going, uh, casual. Nah, some of this stuff's good. This, I'm not sure about, mate. Uh, <laughs> Trixie in Toyland. I'm pretty sure this is one of those multiple things from... The guys that made Ninja Bread Man, which is essentially the same game as Ninja Bread Man, just with a different skin on it. I'm going to give it a try. Chances are it's not going to be too hard to finish, so we'll end up with a game hour daily on it at some point. Do look out for that. I might do it as a kind of uh, cartoony week and put in Hello Kitty Roller Rescue, because we have had a request for that one. So maybe I'll do that as a special sometime. You may have even already seen it by the time this video comes out, in fact. <laughs> Next we have uh, Dead Rising. Uh, I'm trying to... Dead Rising Chop Till You Drop, which is a game that from the moment I found out that it existed, I wanted to play it. It's uh, I love the Dead Rising games, they're a lot of fun, but uh, one way you can use the re Wiimote to beat zombies up, yeah, I'm going to try that. Hopefully it's uh, good with the controller. It all looks pretty good condition. The manual's a bit creased, so it's been used, it's been well used in fact. Uh, so hopefully that's a good sign, so I'm looking forward to giving that a try. And last but not least, something that Jen found and said, oh, you do like your uh, RPGs, so give this a try. Final Fantasy Crystal Chronicles Echoes of Time. I don't know how good this is. I don't know what it's about. I saw it, thought, that's not been there for quite a while. I'm not going to see it again if I don't pick it up. So here it is in nice condition. So I'm really happy to add it to the set. I do like some of the Final Fantasy games and... Uh, not uh, sure about the Crystal Chronicles, don't know an awful lot about them, but wow, that's an extensive uh, manual there. Everything's here, so I should be able to work out what's going on, and uh, we'll see how it goes. I'm looking forward to giving it a try at some point when I have time to actually sit down and give proper time to an RPG. At the moment, I'm still playing Skyrim, and until I finished Skyrim, which has taken up all of my free time in terms of gaming free time, I haven't really got any space for another RPG. But uh, next on my list is probably Steambot Chronicles. Because when I tried that at Christmas, uh, it was a Christmas present from Jen. We loved playing it, but neither of us have had time to sit down and do it. So I'm just going to have to make the time once Skyrim's done.
Okay, guys, this one's going to be very short because I wasn't expecting a huge amount. Now, I kind of impulse purchased a thing on uh, Facebook and on their marketplace, and I'm quite happy I did because I've wanted one for ages, and it came up really nice condition one. So I finally have a Dreamcast keyboard. It's cleaned up really well. It came uh, and it was a bit grubby, but uh, I've used the... Uh, the alcohol wipes that I got from the pound shop down in town, actually. So, well worth getting some of them. I've cleaned up my Texas Instruments, the Amstrad CPC, a lot of the consoles, and this keyboard and it's come out really nice. It's lovely. And just listen to this. Proper old-style keyboard. Loving it. And, uh, yeah, it looks all pretty good conditions. So I'm really happy to finally have that as part of the set. I want to get uh, Typing of the Dead, so I need to work out how to do an import game because I'm, that's what I want this for. Typing of the Dead, Fantasy Star Online, that kind of thing. I want to be able to play. But that's not the only thing that I've got for you today. Because uh, after I did this uh, last set of pickups with all the other stuff, I expected that to be the, pretty much the last because I'm not looking around for an awful lot of gaming stuff at the moment. Finding PS2 games uh, is difficult because we're near the end of the collection now. We're over 70% through. And as a result, finding new ones is really, really hard. But while uh, Jen was out the other day, she popped into her CEX in Bury and found a copy of WrestleMania 2000 for the N64, which I don't have, and which is one of the it's one of those games that uh, it's recommended. It's like it's it's one of the, one of the ones that if you're into that kind of game, you should have. So I'm really happy to finally have it in the collection because she didn't know this, but I've been trying to get a copy to finish the WWF, uh, WCW thing that's set off for uh, quite a while. So I think, I think I've got them all now. I'll put it on screen if I haven't, but I'm uh, pretty sure I've got them all. So I'm really happy. But if I haven't, I'll find the rest because that's the one that I found really difficult to pick up. So that's really all I've got for these pickups. I'm really happy to have this keyboard. Listen. I love old style keyboards. You'll probably find this turns up in Game Hammer. And uh, it's one of those things that I love the way the AVGN, the Angry Video Game now, to uses the Commodore 64 as his PC keyboard in a lot of his uh, uh, videos. Uh, I like that kind of joker. I want to start doing that. I was planning on uh, making cameos for the Texas Instruments and things, but the Dreamcast keyboard is definitely going to turn up in Game Hammer at some point, even if I'm not using it on a Dreamcast. But really happy to have this, especially, as I say, it's cleaned up nice, so... Yeah, feeling pretty good. Okay, I think I'm in focus. Hello, guys. I wasn't expecting to have any more to talk about for this pickup because it's getting really hard to find PS2 games and uh, the N64 stuff and things like that. They're just not moving around in the local shops either. And I haven't had time to travel because I've been so full of uh, work and things like that. But Jen has provided, and I'm really, I can't believe it, Jen. Thank you so much, because she found a copy of Capcom vs. SNK 2, which looks in amazing condition. I'm loving this. Everything's here, and it looks brilliant. I am so happy. I couldn't believe it, because uh, I've been wanting this game for quite a while. It's a, it's a hell of a tournament fighter, and uh, I believe I played it way back when, when I was at university. Got uh, a friend brought it around one time, something like that. I never had it myself, but I did play it. I'm looking forward to playing it again. But what I'm actually looking forward to even more is Monster Hunter. Oh my goodness. I enjoyed the version that's on the Wii, Monster Hunter Try. And I wanted the PS2 version so much. She's got it in great condition. It looks amazing. And everything's here, including, oddly enough, this thing that turned up in the manual. CEX have stopped uh, taking the manuals out of games in a lot of places, which is weird because it's on the shelf and people will just go in and nick them. I'm sure of that. In, you know, there's a there's a kind of collector, not cl collector, there's a kind of uh, seller, reseller, who takes the manuals out of everything that they sell and sells them separately. Well, they're just going to go to CEX once that word's out, aren't they? And they're going to take all the manuals out of the games. CEX aren't going to notice. So anyway, Action Replay. This was inside for an odd reason. I have no idea why. No uh, case for it. I'll find a spare case. Action Replay for PlayStation 2. Unleash the power. Beat the game. I don't know. I know it's a cheat disc, but that's all I know about it. But Monster Hunter. Everything's here. Brilliant. So happy. But she didn't stop there. Because Jen provided. 
She also found a copy of Automobili Lamborghini, which you might remember from last uh, pickups. We already have. I picked it up. But not a CX, they just call it Lamborghini. So when Jen's been looking at my uh, list of games that I have, it's not there on that list. It's listed as Automobili Lamborghini, which is what it's actually called. So she picked it up. I've got to take it back. It's all right. Uh, she bought it yesterday. I'll take it back tomorrow. I can't walk to Deb. Hurt my foot and I've got a lot of work here anyway, so I can't justify it unless it's later on. So I take it back, get a, a credit voucher, it'll be, it'll be fine. But the other one she got is GT64, which I'm really looking forward to playing. Because uh, it's a bit grubby, but I can clean that up with uh, an alcohol wipe or something. I'm uh, looking forward to looking at that because it's another racing game and the N64 has some decent racing games. But that is it. I think that is probably going to be it for the month as well because... Work is uh, very hectic at the moment, I've got a lot on and I don't have time to travel to look at uh, places. don't have time to get around to the uh, uh, charity shops and things as much as I would like and uh, CEX isn't uh, moving its stock around at the moment so I'm not seeing anything in the local area when I'm popping in and out of work. Well guys, we have an interesting situation here. The moment I'd said that uh, there weren't any more games around in the area so collecting was slowing down, one turned up. Scooby-Doo and the Spooky Swamp. This is one of the hardest to get Scooby-Doo games. In fact, it may actually be the hardest to get Scooby-Doo game from 2010. The graphic quality is amazing on this. This looks really good. It's not next generation. It's not like Xbox 360 or PS3 level, but it's good, really good. It's the point where the PS2 was given the best it could in terms of visuals and uh, storytelling, controls, sound, everything. It's really good, and I was actually surprised. I tested this, played it for half an hour, because I was actually enjoying playing it. It looks like a pretty good game. I'm really glad to have picked a copy up, especially in excellent condition with everything here. And it was very interesting while I was in CX, because uh, Jenna told me it was there, so I had to pop in. Uh, while I was there, there were a couple of uh, younger people at university who were looking at the PS2 stuff to look at what they'd played when they were kids. The next generation of collectors and nostalgia people are here. It's actually quite interesting because, of course, the PS2, it was uh, 90s uh, technology, developed in 1999, released in 2000. So the kids that had it when they were kids are growing up now and they're 18, 19, 20, that kind of age, starting to get a bit of money for themselves looking to pick up something that they enjoy for when they were kids. Same thing as with my Amstrad CPC. So it's the same factor. It's actually quite interesting to see it. And it's it really warms the heart as a collector to know that uh, we're not going to be the last generation. There's still going to be another generation that remembers the physical stuff and wants to go back and play those games again. It's brilliant. Speaking of uh, going back to play games again, you might have seen this in the background. Syndicate on Mega Drive. I loved Syndicate. Uh, I had a copy on um, the PC. I borrowed it off a friend, so I don't have a, I don't have a copy on PC anymore. I'm going to look on uh, GOG. I think they've got a sale at the moment. See if Syndicate's in the sale because I want to play it again and compare it with this version because this is a different game. It's got uh, similar stylings, but I really could have done with getting a box copy. I'm going to try and find the manual at the very least because I want to know the controls. It's hard to play on the Mega Drive with three buttons. It's a difficult game to play. I know that, uh, yeah, sure. It was a mouse, uh, so you had two buttons, uh, essentially, for your input on the PC. But it worked an awful lot better in, uh, from the way I play things. This is going to be a learning curve, and I want to compare the two. So, yeah, that's it. Though. That's all I've got. It's slim picking. It really is slim pickings. One PS2 game and a Mega Drive game because of nostalgia factor. It's hard to get these things anymore. Collecting has become difficult for the PS2 collection. But we do have uh, over 1,600 to keep me going. So it's not like I've got nothing to play. It's just uh, harder to collect. Right, this one's going to be a bit different and quick. Didn't expect another uh, thing to come up just so quick. As you can see, I wasn't even in the room when this happened. <laughs> Birds of Europe, not something that you would expect me to pick up, but I do like some oddities from the old days when multimedia was uh, first coming in, CD technology wasn't uh, wasn't what we have now where it's just like a passing fad. It was the thing and uh, everyone wanted stuff on it. So this one's Birds of Europe, it's marked as lifestyle, but what it is is a kind of uh, educational encyclopedia 
from a range of titles like that. And uh, it's all about birds, how to spot them, how to identify them, that kind of thing. So I think this will be an interesting one for a game hammer, and also a good addition to the educational set of things that when they eventually the museum comes together, there will be a, a, a piece on educational software. I've got over here in the corner some Texas instrument stuff, and some of that is educational. Let's turn it around. Now, you can kind of see in the corner, I'll just move this up. This is actually from the Tory conference one year. I got a photo with me ma uh, on a green screen. They mastered it onto <laughs> number 10. We've got some odd stuff in here, like early reading, a Texas Instruments uh, early reading cassette, not cassette, it's a cartridge. The uh, Texas Instruments had a uh, cartridge slot. Uh, touch typing tutor, beginning grammar. There's really nothing to these. It's uh, very uh, standardised stuff. So, yeah. Things like that. It all add up. And eventually, where am I? There I am. And eventually what will happen is I'll have an educational area. Or we can have a... I want to call it an exhibition. An exhibit is what I'm on about. An exhibit on educational stuff in the museum, along with all the games. And you can be able to interact with this stuff and see how it was. I'm going to get uh, the Amsoft 12 pack and things like that with uh, animal, vegetable, mineral, and uh, word hang and things like that. Stuff that uh, would work quite well as... Uh, what was the other one? I want to say preschool, but it wasn't. It was like... Uh, I'll put it on screen here. There was this uh, set of uh, educational titles that used to always be advertised in Amstrad Action. And uh, I want to get those as well to make an exhibit on this stuff. And also I'll do a Game Hammer episode or two. Uh, it's not going to happen anytime soon, you know, because I've got plans. And also I don't have the stuff yet. But that's what I want to do. And that'll be great once we actually get there. So, Birds of Europe's part of that. And uh, we'll see how we got. I've got around here somewhere in like, Compton's Interactive Encyclopedia. That kind of thing. That's the kind of uh, thing that this uh, appears to be. So, yeah. We'll see how it goes. <laughs> but that's the plan. The museum is still like seven to ten years off, and it's just one of those things. But we'll get there eventually. Okay, guys. I didn't expect to say anything more for this pickups video, because it's getting hard to find PS2 stuff, but we did find something. And that is... Star Ocean Till the End of Time bonus disc. This is what you would get as a pre-order for Star Ocean Till the End of Time, which is around here somewhere. Where is it? Uh, my goodness. Here it is. When you pre-order in Star Ocean, you would get this. So it's just a DVD with extras, very much like the uh, the one that we've got already for Star Fox. Uh, Star Fox Adventure or something like that, the, the one that had all the DVDs in the making of. This also has uh, Final Fantasy XII uh, demo videos and things like that. So it's quite interesting and it's a nice addition to the set, especially once the museum comes around, we'll eventually get to put this in there, along with the yeah Star Fox Adventures Collector's Edition uh, bonus disc just over there. But it's not the only thing i found because I finally managed to find Action Pack number one. It's the Amstrad Action cover tape from the start of them doing the Action Pack monthly cover tapes. This is brilliant. I'm very happy to have this because it means that I think I've got... I, believe, I may be uh, mistaken in this, but I'm pretty sure I now have one to about 32, maybe further on. I'll put it on screen what the actual number is. So I'm getting there with the collection. There are only... Um, oh, how many are there? It went up to issue 117, so I think there's something like 51 of them, and I've got about 30-odd. So I'm doing really well on them, but uh, the ones that I don't have now are the ones that, uh, after I stopped uh, reading Amstrad Action, when I'd moved on with my PC. So, yeah, there was no reason for me to have got them, and uh, I started at tape number 7 with the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. Uh, I think it's number 7, I just got it here. Tip 8. Tip it with the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. Andrew had been playing the demo the other day, so that's why it's here. So, we're doing well with that. So, I've got the ones from before I started. Now I just need to finish off the ones from after. I do have one of them here. What's this one? This is one of the ones from after. So, tip 33 there. So, uh, that was uh, after I'd finished. I picked that up uh, a while back. So, uh, yeah, we're in the 30s now, and I'm trying to get them all together. The final one will be really hard, because very few people had issue 117. That's the final one. My goodness, <laughs> 117 issues for a computer magazine. Yeah, where a computer of that type normally lasts about five or six years, it lasted a decade. Wow.
The CPC went and just kept going. It was an amazing system. Oh my goodness, guys. Wow. We have had such a good time. I've just been up to visit my parents and uh, we found a few things while we were there. So let me just move her bag out of the way. Just move my camera back so I can bring it up. Can you guess where we've been? <laughs> oh, on the journey we've passed two CEXs coming home. So we had to stop in because they had some nice little trinkets to add to the collection. This will be the last thing that I buy for this month because I'm trying to ratchet down because I don't want to be traveling too far and picking up all the expensive stuff because that's not part of collecting. I want to, I enjoy the hunt as much as anything else. So I'm going to be ratcheting back. Besides, there's not much locally anymore because we've got it all. So Armored Core 9 Breaker, not one that we had in the collection, but I do like the Armored Core big robot fighting stuff so I had to pick this up and uh, it's all here in great condition it hasn't been opened much so is it good is it bad I don't know but it's in great condition so I'm happy to add that to the set where's the other armor cores we've got uh, we've got armor core 2 armor core 2 another age and armored core 3 up there so nice to add another one to the set I think that's all of them is it the only one? I'm pretty sure all armor core 1 is on PlayStation 1 if it's not I'll put a link not a link, I'll just put a bit of text on the screen that'll tell us. But the next one, oh my goodness, the moment I knew it was around, I had to have it. Metal Slug 5. Now, you might, if you've been a long time viewer, know that I've already got the Metal Slug Anthology, which has 1 to 6 and X on it. And so why would I want the additionals? Aside from the fact that I'm going for the complete set and therefore we would need them. Well, the reason is because these extra standalone versions have extra functions on them. Different mission modes, little mini games, things like that. They're on here, but they're not on the anthology. So if you want the complete experience for any particular one, like Metal Slug 3, for example, which is brilliant, then you would need to get the single uh, release. But, oh, it's great condition. It's still got the new game sheen to it. It still feels new. Hardly opens, and everything is here. So I'm really, really happy to add that to the set because I really want to play that. That's probably going to be what I play for the next hour because I've got a little bit of time. But that's not everything that we got. I'm going to move over and talk about a few other things now. We have uh, Mission Impossible on the N64, which I was sure I already had, but uh, it's not on my game list, so I mustn't have it. Madden Football 64, Magical Tetris Challenge, and Multi Racing Championship. They're the only ones on my uh, N64. I have a list of games and their conditions on my phone at all times because uh, of one big thing. If you have the tennis games on PS2, and you know you haven't got them all, do you pick up Smash Court Tennis or Tennis Court Smash? They are real, legitimate PlayStation 2 games. Which one have you got? <laughs> Same words, different order. So I have a list with conditions, so I can uh, upgrade if I see something that's reasonably within my price range that is in better condition. Because, of course, this is all eventually going into a museum. So, nice to be able to check and find we don't have Mission Impossible. Looking forward to giving it a try. Uh which Jen thought we already had because uh, I've seen it around. I don't know why. But the other one I picked up that I have no idea what this is, and I had to get it because we're going for a complete set for the N64, but also because it sounds weird. Book Bumble. What is it? I have no idea, but I'm going to find out. And it looks in pretty good condition. So does Mission Impossible. So I'm very happy to have these. In fact, that, yeah, the marks on it just appear to be wear and tear. So I'm very happy to add that to the set. Looking forward to giving it a try. Now the next one up I had to get, because I have wanted this game since I saw a review of it in an Xbox magazine back when the Xbox was the big system. And it's Crimson Skies. High Road to Revenge, but Crimson Skies. I have wanted this for so long, it never got released in Durham. Or if it did, there's like two copies and someone bought them. So, I finally got a copy. I am looking forward to giving this a try. It's old-fashioned dogfighting style arcade fight simulator. Not opening very fast, so it hasn't been used much, but everything's here, including all the extra bump with the manual. So this should give us a nice uh, indication as well. Oh, 2003 2000, to early 2004 catalogue. This should give us an idea of what's out. So let's have a look. What have we got here? Um, Project Gotham Racing 2, yes. Tom Clancy's Rainbow Six Three. Halo 2, of course. Grab by the Ghoulies, Voodoo Vince. I don't have a copy of Voodoo Vince, so I would like to get that. 
Harry Potter Philosopher's Stone, Crimson Skies, yep, just got that, Sonic Heroes, oh my goodness, Sonic Heroes, Soul Calibur 2, such a good game, Deus Ex, Invisible War, James Bond, Everything or Nothing, 13, True Crime, Streets of LA, FIFA 2004, Amped 2, Top Spin, Tony Hawk's Underground, Colin McRae 4, Sudeke, Star Wars Jedi Knight Jedi Academy, Medal of Honor Rising Sun, and Lord of the Rings Return of the King. And then we've got the uh, bits and pieces that you can buy. The uh, DVD movie playback kit, the controller S style in green, which would be uh, this thing here. Also, we've got an Xbox Live communicator, which I have around somewhere, but I'm not going to dig it out because everyone's seen a set of headphones before. And an Xbox memory module, which would look something like that bit there. It's hard to get out the back of these. There it is. That's not an official one. It's just one I happen to have. But yeah. There we go. Is everything back in? My goodness. I think such a tight fit in these controllers. Anyway, Crimson Skies, brilliant condition. Really looking forward to giving that a try. But that's not everything because the main reason we went to check out one of these CE Access is that's how many PS2 games that we didn't have we've managed to get. So, I'm going to zoom this out a bit there, yeah, so you can see me properly. First of all, I, the moment I saw this, even though it's a bit uh, dog-eared, I had to have it. Street Fighter EX3. That does not look like a proper cover, does it? It looks weird. With all the lines on the back, it looks printed. It looks like it's a replica, but it's the real thing. Sadly, it's uh, an early game with a missing manual, but uh, that's why the condition looks odd. It looks dog-eared, it looks like it's printed, because it's a 2000 release. So it's very early in the PS2's life, and I'm looking forward to giving it a try, because I do like my fighting games. Speaking of fighting games, Backyard Wrestling 2, There Goes the Neighbourhood. It's again, no manual, this is a replacement case, but you know, it'll do for the moment. The, uh, just quick check, yeah, the cover is real though. Genuine cover, replacement case, just one of those things. So let's move on to something that I'm actually interested in, because uh, wrestling games, ugh. Take them or leave them now, I'll leave them, thanks. This one is Snow X Racing, so I'm assuming it's Snow Cross or something like that. But actually, according to this, Snow X Racing, it's a SXR Snow Cross Racing. So, looks interesting, looks, uh, is it what? Some sort of, yeah, it's a proper racing game. Uh, do stunts like, it's SSX basically on snow plows. So there you are. Good condition, well, moderately good condition, and everything's there. Here's one I didn't know existed, and we have to have, because I kind of like these games. Uh, they're racing, but it's like off-road quad racing. ATV Quad Power Racing 2. So, very happy to add this to the set. Heavy, really heavy. The manual's substantial. So there we are. Everything's here. And I think this is going to be a lot of fun. The ATV games are fantastic. I love playing them. They've got a, a, their own kind of character. It's... Uh, it's a bit like the SSX on the uh, combined with Gran Turismo, it's an oddity. And I love playing them, they've got a lot of adrenaline and, like I say, it's all personal character. So I'm really looking forward to getting that, wow, that was hollow, wasn't it? I'm lo really looking forward to giving that a try. Staying on the same theme, ATV Off-Road Fury 4, which looks pretty good. I love the art style they've got on there, it's like a dirty graffiti style art thing. It's street art. Everything's here again and it looks like it's going to be in good condition. So what we've got here is the extra bump. I think it's just a... yeah, it's just a registration card. I haven't got any more of the uh, catalogues. But here's one that I thought we already had and Jen, when I showed her it, said, and we already got that. I said, no, we managed to get the sequel, which is harder to find, funnily enough. We've been seeing this around for months in various shops. Blood Rain. Now, as a fan of 2000 AD, I have severe issues with this game because that character is Durham Red from the 2000 AD comics. Now, I'm going to prove it by showing you. Blood Rain, Durham Red. This one came first by years. So 2000 AD, if I remember correctly, sued because of this. And I can't blame them. It looks like an absolute ripoff. Now, the story may be different, but that is a vampire who looks exactly like this woman who is a mutant vampire. Open and shut case in my view. 
But uh, I can't actually remember how the uh, lawsuit went down. I'm going to leave a note to myself in this video. I should do a video on that case because I think that would be very interesting from a gaming point of view and a legal point of view. And as someone with a law degree who loves the law, I think that's going to go down well. But it's not everything that we got because there is another one. Twin Calibre. Don't really know much about this. Two weapons at once. Two characters on screen at the same time. Build up a devastating arsenal. 26 blood-soaked action-packed levels. Just has a pair of guns on the front. It's some third-person action game. Britney's dance beat. Twin Calibre. We asked a guy to uh, swap cases over because the Twin Calibre one, which I've been looking forward to getting for a long time, it was damaged. So we said, can you swap it with Britney's Dance Beat? It's 50p game instead of a 75p. It's changed the inlets and then sold us Britney. But it's not the last one. Crazy Chicken X, that's the last one. And I have no idea what this is going to be. <laughs> Landscape and objects completely in 3D for the first time. Perfect animations, flying and running chickens, numerous gags and hidden extras, two extra games with the main game, and elaborate soundtrack. Video gaming's most pep most popular no video gaming's most popular chicken returns. Crazy Chicken X. I don't know what this is. Is it some kind of virtual pet? I don't know, but the moment I saw it, well the moment Jen saw it, we had to have it because it's not in the collection and it looks ridiculous. I don't know what this is. This manual. Someone's... Ugh. Got to wash my hands after this. Ugh. I don't know what's on this, but... It, it's... I have a feeling someone's poured... Or spilt coke or something on it. And it's congealed. I'm going to wash my hands after this. Ugh. Hey, guys. Normally, I would have left it where I said I had. But I had to take that... Uh, Twin Calibre that turned out to be Britney's dance beat back to CES. So I've done that this morning on my way to work and uh, came back and got uh, this one cleaned. It's ATV Off-Road Fury 4. It wouldn't load because it was uh, marked, so it's cleaned up. But uh, while I was down there, it turns out that they did have one extra game. So we picked up Scar and uh, what is it? S Squadra Corsa Alfa Romeo. That is, uh, I'm assuming that's in Italian because that's not English, but Scar. So it's a racing game with Alfa Romeos, very nice condition, everything's here. So that's a nice uh, addition. Wow, look at the size of this manual. You don't get manuals that big in a lot of these games. It's like a book from 2005, so it's later on. That's when uh, a lot of manuals, and looking over here, uh, they started to become uh, basically pamphlets, and that's a book. Wow. So that's quite good. I'm, I'm impressed by that. That really is the last of it, though, because we took that twin calibre back, because it was Britney's dance beat. Anyway, that's all I've got time for. Now, guys, I swear I don't keep doing this on purpose. I don't like uh, having to put all those uh, static bits in to jump between the days, but that was genuinely supposed to be the last thing that we recorded, except, yeah, my local charity shop had something today. <laughs> the Elder Scrolls Online Imperial Edition, PC and Mac version, with the Molag Bal statue, the wonderful leather bound art book, the uh, map, and the game in the steel book. Oh my goodness, I couldn't say no. It was a, at a price I couldn't say no to, and then I just had to have it. It was amazing. The statue is superb. I'll just put this back down before I drop it. The statue is superb. Now, the uh, registration code and all that has been used, so the Imperial Edition, uh, I can't get the extras, but that's fine because I'm already playing the game anyway on the Xbox using the Gold Edition, which gives you a lot of the Imperial Edition stuff. So, and I haven't lost out, but I had to have this because for the... just it ne This style of thing never turns up in my local charity shops. And then there it was. And the statue is just so brilliant. I, I asked to have a look at it in the shop just to make sure everything was there. And it was. And I got a crowd around me where people go, what's that? A computer game shouldn't be that big. And then they saw the statue and like, whoa, he looks weird. So, yeah, that's Molag Baal. He's the big bad guy. And, oh, it's amazing. The statue actually comes in three parts. The uh, Molag Baal with holding the Imperial guy. There's the main part. And then 
underneath when you take that bit out, which is what uh, the game and the statue are recessed into. Underneath is a second piece, and that's got Mola Bell's tail and the plinth that you stand him on. So you slot all those together. It's just slotted. Click, click, click. Like uh, It's like Lego. It fits all together really well. And then you've got this brilliant statue, which is now has pride of place on a shelf in my lounge. And underneath that is the art book and the map. So it's really nicely uh, set out. Packages really well. I'm so happy to have it. It's brilliant. <laughs> I don't normally go in for these giant collector's editions because of one question. Where do you keep them? But on this situation, in this case, I am going to make an exception because I love the Elder Scrolls. It's brilliant. I won't be going out of my way to get more of the uh, special editions because they're huge. Let's put it that way. But to have one in the set... Yeah, that's going to be a nice little piece for the museum when it eventually arrives. Anyway, that's all I've got time for this time. So thank you very much for getting to the end of this video. I hope you did enjoy it. And if you did, remember to click that like button, share it with your friends so that they'll know a good game when they see it. And I think we've had some very good games in this set of pickups. And do subscribe for future videos because we'll be more in the future. But until next time, I've been Zoe Cove Robinson. You've been watching a games pickup on Game Hammer Extras on the Knob Mouse channel. That's a bit of a mouthful. And I'll see you next time.